this is my childhood come to fruition. I want to share with people what my story is because I know there are so many people out there that would love to have the opportunity to explore the ocean um, and explore just themselves, but are afraid to because they don't know what it's like. This is Raina Campbell, your chief dream driver, and welcome to the No Parking Podcast, where through conversations and discussions with creatives like yourself, we'll find interesting approaches to help you take your dreams out of park, put them in drive, and ride towards success. Hey, dream drivers, welcome to episode 217. So when I was a kid, my mom forced me to take swimming lessons. I think it was like kindergarten or first grade. Every week I went to the YWCA and I took swimming lessons up to, I think, about level four or five. And I hated them. I hated every single lesson. But now as an adult looking back, those are probably the best lessons that my mom ever made me do. Knowing how to swim as a black child, as a black woman is so important. And it's something that not all of us have access to. That's why when this week's guest, Ryan Tyler, reached out, I knew she was somebody whose story I wanted to share with you all. Ryan calls herself a cyborg mermaid. She's a creator, adventurer, educator, guide to the hidden treasures of the aquatic world. Ryan offers services such as scuba diving courses, eco yoga tours, and ocean healing retreats for her clients. But on this episode, we're going to talk about how she first fell in love with water, the realities of being a black female scuba diver the challenges and successes of building an aquatic-based business, and why the concept of moving past fear serves as such an important basis for all the work that she does. I think hearing Ryan's very unique dream-driving journey will really show you all just how vast the rewards of doing what you love are. As always, if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend. This is a unique episode. This is a special one. And I just want to have as many people listening to it and hearing its message as possible. Make sure you're following us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We are Dreams and Drive across the board on all three platforms. And if you want to use the hashtag Dreams and Drive when sharing, please do. As always, guys, make sure that you are subscribed to wherever you're listening to this so that you get updates every time we have a new episode. And if you want to be part of our week newsletter the keys you can sign up by going to dreamsanddrive.com slash join that's dreamsanddrive.com slash join all right let's hear from ryan i've always loved being in the water when i would go to the pool with my cousins and friends we would uh pretend to be mermaids so i, I would do a lot of <laughs> swimming with my legs together type of thing. And, uh, and it's, it's funny that now my profession is, is as a cyborg mermaid or a scuba instructor. And, um, and I also do, uh, aquatic performances as a mermaid. This is my childhood come to fruition. (laughs) Wait, you do. That's so dope. We definitely, I didn't know that you do that. We definitely going to have to talk about that later. And a cyborg, cyborg mermaid. Is that what you said? Yeah, so that's just me being geeky. <laughs> um, but so, as you know, a cyborg is part human, part machine. Um, so in order to breathe underwater, you have to use scuba equipment, which is mach- like kind of like a machine. So I'm like, oh, I'm a cyborg mermaid. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. So then, like, what was the dream for you then as a kid? Like, what... What was it that you thought you'd be when you got older? I, I'm i pretty sure I used to tell my grandmother I would be like a doctor or something. Mm-hmm. This is not it, at all the direction I wanted to take my life. Um, but it's been it's been quite a journey. I've I've had a few experiences. But what's been consistent since I can remember is this desire to travel the world and experience cultures and communities and just people like so as a kid I was always trying to you know I was just fascinated with like National Geographic and all of my friends who were from different countries and trying to speak their languages and get to know where their families were from and things like that so I've what's been consistent is just traveling so I've always known that I would be 
kind of like a rolling stone or a nomad type of person. Mm-hmm. I found the perfect career for that. Did you grow up with your grandmother? I did. I did. Uh, she's amazing. She is, I mean, anyone you talk to, she's just the ultimate caregiver and so loving and i love you grandma <laughs> <laughs> no i just asked that because i know you I, you kept mentioning her like in the early parts when you were talking about you know being a kid and that that childhood inspiration and it's funny when you're when you're younger to have people who believe in you right and who nurture that in you oh yeah definitely what did you end up pursuing like in college? Cause I know you actually, you have a degree in scuba. Well, you have a lot of certifications, a lot of things, but like, what was, what, what, what was the path to, um, you know, figuring out how you were going to spend your life? Well, so I would say this starts when I was, um, 14 or so I decided that I would be an exchange student and I went on that journey and uh, I, I became an exchange student with the Rotary Club International. Um, and I was a student ambassador to Japan. And when I was in Japan, so I was there while I was, when I was 16, I discovered like it just solidified that that idea of, yes, I definitely want to travel for the rest of my life. I definitely want to spend more time learning different cultures. And when I was there, I actually had the chance to meet um, an anthropologist. And that just I was just like, wow. So there is a whole study of people and culture. That is what I'm going to do with my life. From 16, I just that's just what I focused on when I got back to high school in the States. Uh, that was, i looked for anthropology programs. And, uh, when I went to college, uh, officially for the first time, I got accepted into the anthropology program at, at Florida Atlantic university. I decided my focus would be on, on archeology span because it was the coolest. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's like super scientific, but also, you're discovering the the unwritten stories of the past. You know, history is typically written by the winners. So the appeal for archaeology for me was this is like day-to-day people like me. I'm going to study them and their cultures. One of my assignments for my field archaeology course was to examine uh, an archaeological report. I don't know how, I don't even remember how it fell into my lap, but um, I found a report on underwater archaeology. It was like a light bulb for me. Uh, that was when I realized that scuba was a, a thing, like you could do things underwater for extended periods of time, uh, and that I could do it with within the discipline. So I, that just like ignited everything. Like the ignition was just turned right on for me in that moment. And I began to pursue diving. What year was this? 2011, 2012. All right. So then what was the path to like, once you, you had this revelation, you know, your ignition got ignited. I love that metaphor. How did you go about doing like did you have any experience before with scuba diving? Were you somebody who was like in the water? Like how did you go about putting this dream into motion? Or this new dream into motion, I should say. No, I was not that person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was in the pool. I was a pool person. Um I Is there a difference? There's a difference between scuba diving and being in the pool, right? So a portion of of your scuba diving training takes place in a pool or a confined area a controlled area when you're when you're actually going out to scuba dive you're dealing with live water you're dealing with the ocean so um well at least for me of course you can dive in lakes and quarries and things like that but as a floridian as somebody who's from florida um i'm dealing with primarily moving water with ocean water so i had been to the beach (laughs) growing up in Florida. Uh, but whenever I would go out to, um, to the water, I wouldn't go very far. You know, it was just, it was, it was tough for me because when I was really young, I had, I actually had a 
a bad experience with water sports when I was mm. really young and I, I developed like a fear of, of it. So I kind of stayed away from being in the water. But when, when I discovered this report and I was just like, okay, I've got to find out about scuba diving. I realized that I was afraid. I remember telling one of my closest friends, I, I was just like, I'm afraid of the ocean and it's irrational and you're going to help me. And so uh, that 2012 started that journey of me overcoming my fears of of something that was unknown mm-hmm. so that I can realize the my fullest potential, which eventually led to all all of this dive muse, being in the water, all, all of it. I think that's a common theme for a lot of us dream drivers is overcoming that fear and anxiety of the unknown because it's crippling, right? It's it's like the block, it's like the roadblock on the road when we're trying to drive. And sometimes we don't know the roadblock is there, and sometimes we know it's there, but we refuse to do anything about it. So what were some of the steps that you took when it came to overcoming this fear of the water and reaching your fullest potential as a diver? I always tell people you have to start somewhere. So mm-hmm. I started with snorkeling. I told I told my friend, you know, what I what I said and uh he was just like, "Okay, well, let's get in the water." I I got in the water with him. It was cool at first, but then I I was faced with my my fears. I was put face to face with my fears. That that really started the journey. So I would get in the water uh, with snorkeling almost every day for like two years before I actually became a diver. Were there ever times that you wanted to give up during that beginning process? Oh my goodness, Raina, let me tell you. I, I There were times where I just was so overwhelmed that I would cry. And other times I would just not move. And now as a dive professional, I know what, you know, what those reactions are like there are different types of uh, reactions to stress Mm -hmm. in the water Um, and I definitely know how to deal with it with within other people as well as with myself but my my journey was very much I I really had to push myself each time and know when I hit a limit so I would exceed my limit each time I I would get in the water but there were times that I was in the water like if if you saw my my mask full of water, it was probably because I was crying. You know? <laughs> With continuing, I learned things that made me feel more comfortable. Um, with like having simple things like having water in my face, um, learning how to clear my mask, learning how to clear my snorkel, really understanding my body in the water, uh, and and how it moves with the water and things like that. So all of that took just me getting in the water and experiencing new things each time, and I and and picking up on it and just keep continuing to try. So once you conquered snorkeling, then what was next? I started duck diving or skin diving is what what we call it in the paddy world, and that's just like uh, you hold your breath and you you go down with the snorkeling. I did. I, I, I will say that I did that simultaneously, but at some point I transitioned from being mostly at the surface swimming to going down and swimming underwater and actually getting up close and personal with the fish and the corals um, or, and, you know, exploring the mangroves. I, in, in this time, I, I moved to, from Fort Lauderdale to, Key West. So there's Key West is absolutely the the keys are gorgeous. So there's a lot of um, beautiful natural spaces there. So I was able to explore um, these natural spaces kind of very easily without without any um, extra effort. So it was easier for me to actually get in the water all the time. Yeah, I started just going going down and practicing holding my breath longer and um, researching the the animals, the critters that I would see, just learning a little bit more about the ecosystems and how they work, just because that is what I found comfort in. Rather than exploring the unknown, I was able to see something, take it, and 
research it and look or or look in a book and see if I could find that in in this area and kind of make mini missions for myself. Was the goal to do this full time and that's what you're working towards? Or were you just kind of developing this as a hobby and a passion on the side? My goal was to be able to do underwater archaeology. Mm. That was that was the whole thing. I was like, I'm going to be an underwater archaeologist. I'm going to be an underwater archaeologist. And I just, with the level that I was at, at the time, and in terms of my uh, ocean exploration, <laughs> I'll, I'll put it that way, it kind of took over and it became the main focus because it was such a big thing. I had to really get to know myself on a deeper level and understand what what made me feel comfort in those spaces and and remind myself what I was doing it for. I ended up, you know, going from snorkeling to skin diving to uh, researching critters and and uh, spearfishing and lobstering and things like that. I started to get more interested in in the actual ecology and how the ecosystems would work together and things like that. Was it costly to pursue this? Um, I, so I was living in Key West and in Key West, the culture is you work and then you play and you, you work to play. So a lot of the people that live in Key West, they're, they're bartenders and servers, Mm -hmm. but on their time off, they're, they're outside in the mangroves or out on a dive boat. So it was pretty accessible uh, for me to, to get into it. It can be pretty expensive, but there are ways that it's not. And it is definitely one of those things that can be affordable. It depends on how you approach it. So talk to me a little bit about Dive Muse. What made you want to create this? I guess, well, how would you describe Dive Dive Muse? Dive Muse actually came to me in a dream. I was doing my, uh, my open water scuba instructor training. I was toward the end of it and I, I just woke up one night in like in the middle of the night and I, it, the word, the words dive news was in my head. And I just was like, okay, I got to get on the computer. <laughs> and so I got on the computer and I just, I literally just, I made a website <laughs> and an Instagram and a Facebook and a YouTube. And I, I, I was half like pretty much half asleep, but it just can't, I just had this kind of, I just knew what I needed to do. It's just like, this is my brand and I'm going to build it. I want to show people what it's like to be a water person. I want to share with people what my story is because I know there are so many people out there that would love to have the opportunity to explore the ocean um, and explore just themselves Mm-hmm. in this way, but are afraid to because they don't know what it's like. Or they feed into s- stereotypes about what it's like, whether it be from a socioeconomical standpoint or I don't know how to describe this, or like uh, what sharks do and their behavior and things like that. You know, people create these fears that they have they have no idea about they they don't actually have any experience with and so that that keeps them from actually experiencing the world for what it is i was just like okay dive muse is going to be that i'm going to show people it gives people i love what you said about exploring how through exploring the water and expo- exploring your fears you're getting to know yourself do you feel like that's something that you've personally gone through through this time um building the brand and and building your own, or I guess not building, but um, acting on your your passions for the water and underwater archaeology and all of that stuff. It's a, a ongoing journey, and mm-hmm. there's mm-hmm. so much growth that I've experienced within it. But every every milestone or every challenge that I face and overcome, it it confirms to me that I'm in the right space. What were like? How were you able to get like your first? 
followers, getting people to want to do dives with you? Like, what was that process like? So I went to college down in the Keys once I had moved there. And I started the um, diving business and technology program. And becoming a dive professional required for me to get experience with dive centers. So key, the Keys um, is they're kind of like the dive capital, dive training capital of, of the world. A lot of people come to the keys to, to learn to dive. Um, so there are a lot of dive shops, so retail shops and, um, tour operators that take people diving, becoming a dive professional, uh, is what introduced me to, working in those spaces and working in those spaces is how I was able to get people to dive with me. Um, so people were already coming there for that experience, but with branching out on my own, that's, that's a different story. So when I created, um, dive muse online, um, I began just reaching out to people and talking about diving all the time. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's pretty typical for a lot of divers, uh, especially the professionals. We we are always <laughs> talking about diving. You know, it's so interesting to me. I'm not sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off. But like, I think even being from New Jersey, I think like the culture of like different cultures are so different because like there's nobody talking about diving around here. Right. It's like there's no nowhere to dive. But just you even ex- talking about like the culture of living in the Keys and how people are servers during the day. And then, at, you know, afterwards they go about their passions. Like it's just a different like that's why I love talking to so many people, because like you get to realize like there's so many different passions and cultures. Like, sorry, I'm just interested in this because it's something I, I've never experienced before. I can't imagine what that might like be like okay so divers are um are always connecting with each other yes we we have an amazing community within the dive community but even still even though you're in you said new jersey right yeah there there are dive shops in new jersey well they're in south jersey because that's by like where the beaches are i live like right Mm -hmm. by the new york city area no one's no one's diving we're in the hudson Uh river <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe. I just yeah. personally am not in, into it. <laughs> yeah, there, there are. So the dive community is worldwide. You can dive in all fifty states, and probably there are people diving in the Hudson River. Oh. Um, God probably- bless their souls. <laughs> <laughs> um, there and there's different styles of diving. So you have um, what I teach is a Caribbean style. So it's just. I don't even know why I said Caribbean style of diving, but basically it's diving suitable for uh, diving in warm tropical waters. Okay. Um, So basically in the Caribbean. Um, But then you have dry suit diving, which is for, which allows you to dive colder waters. Uh, So you can, you can, you know, dive the Hudson. (laughs) You can uh, do ice diving. Uh, you can dive in the Pacific. Um, there's just different uh, different styles of diving. There's cave diving. There's wreck diving. And obviously, there's scientific diving, which is what sparked my interest in all of this. Um, so diving for uh, archaeology or marine biology and things like that. Um, there's commercial diving. There's underwater videography and photography and all, and all this. So there's, there's so much that you can do within the world of diving and, and the community is just, anytime you meet a diver, it, it's, you, you just have this, this common ground. Like you, you know what it's like to be fully submerged. You can make friends in an instant anywhere in the world just because you're divers and it's fantastic. Um, and we, we have our own universal language underwater because, you know, in order to dive for safety, there, there, uh, is a, a communication system that we use. So, uh, and it's primarily, um, hand signals and things like that. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's very unique. 
How important is finding your community? Because you talk about that a lot. You know, it's it's a community of divers. For people who are not even divers, you know, why is that community, that tribe finding so important? Well, everyone wants to feel like they belong to something greater than themselves. When, well, I'll, I can't speak for everyone, but I know I want to be part of something that's bigger than me. And what diving offers is that. As a diver, I've I've been introduced into um, conservation efforts. So things that I never would have that never would have been in my radar. Uh, just being more conscious of how I consu- consume and what I consume, um, how I handle um, my waste practices, um, what initiatives I. I latch on to and and what's important to me um, have all been influenced by diving. It's one of the things that you will hear uh, within the diving community. Once we get you introduced to it, don't worry, um, is uh, being an ocean steward, Mm. being an advocate of the ocean and, and just really caring about the state of, of the oceans and, and how, how we treat them. They're our livelihood, right? And we don't realize how we're, we as humans are destroying them. Our planet is covered. 70% of the earth's surface is, is, is the ocean. We have a blue planet. When people think of earth day, they think of green. Most divers, myself included, I think of blue. Mm. Because that's our planet. We're, most of most of the Earth is is blue, and without the ocean, our, we would not be able to exist. Um, the world is uh, the ocean absorbs so much heat. It provides so much food. Even if you were to look at like um, uh, what is it, Google uh, Google Maps or um, Google Earth at night. Most of the human population is concentrated at the coastline near the water. Wow. Yeah, when you say livelihood, the ocean is definitely that. It, it's it's what keeps us thriving. I mean, we're so connected to the ocean that even we are 70% made of water. We need water to survive. Of course, you can't go out and like, Scoop a, a couple drink the ocean, <laughs> ocean water. You might catch a, a, a cardiac salt arrest. <laughs> <laughs> but how brilliant is it that the ocean water gets filtered um, by rainwater, and then we have these r- reservoirs of fresh water that divers also dive in um, that are 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 drinking water. We're we're water beings. We're that's just like what we are let's talk about the elephant in the room or maybe the i should say the octopus in the water (laughs) that was my joke i was i was planning that joke i was planning that joke um being a black woman in this industry right like you know ryan is a black woman a black (laughs) scuba diver i've never met anyone who's i've never even met a black person who scuba dives right i just don't think i'm connected to any um my sister's a lifeguard so maybe that counts not really what what has that experience been like first what has that experience been like for a long time I never thought about being black that which is a blessing because a lot of people have to think about in every decision that we make as black people we have to think about being black I didn't have to think about it until I got into diving well, until I got to college and started mm-hmm. studying more about what was going on out in the world. But I'm there's actually a I'm I'm a member of the National Association of Black Scuba Divers. Mm-hmm. And there's a there's a lot of us out there. We're all here in these waters, you know, snorkeling, diving, exploring. I actually just had the chance to spend a week with an amazing organization called Diving with a Purpose. Um, it's a an archaeological surveyor for for people who want to get into doing archaeology. 
and uh, they're branching out into coral conservation and things like that. But Diving with the Purpose was started by a man named Ken Stewart, who is a national a, a member of the National Association of Black Scuba Divers, which that organization is also international. Being a black person, discovering diving in Key West, I was most of the time the only one on the boat. And then to be a, a African American female, you know, I didn't really see too many women that looked like me when I was starting out. It wasn't until I started seeking more women that looked like me in the industry, more divers. Uh, more dive professionals that I, I started to find more, more women that look like me. So, so back to this experience that I just had this, this last week, um, I was surrounded by a, an amazing group of beautiful, talented, intelligent, established black people who are divers. And whenever I dive with diving with a purpose, I'm not by myself on the boat. The boat is full. (laughs) It's like being home. What's the, what's the difference in experience? As divers, our primary concern is safety. The difference with diving on a boat full of other uh, black people versus being like the token, I guess. I don't get weird looks. Um, I can't say that uh, there are a lot of a lot of people who do give me weird looks, but I, I have encountered um, situations where people are very surprised that I'm in the water or even like if I if someone asks me, what do you do? I tell them I'm a scuba instructor. They're like, oh, like an air of surprise, you know, mm-hmm. which, which it could be that. Being a scuba instructor is just not so common, but um, when you are speaking with another dive professional and they ask you what you do, and they're like, oh, (laughs) there was none of that on the boat (laughs) with Diving with a Purpose. So I'm just free to be myself, whatever that looks like, whatever that feels like. You know, Ryan, I want to ask you about this because I feel like there is this thing that we don't talk about a lot in the black community, which is our relationship with water and slavery and how many of us black people in America got here or got to wherever we got to before America. Um, Let's talk about that or tell me, what are your thoughts on that? A lot of the trauma from that experience within the black community uh comes from that and it kind of is the reason why a lot of people are always telling me they can't swim and they have no interest or they're too scared or something like that. I think it's just generational trauma, just how we're conditioned to to, to treat water or behave around water. That's so interesting and you know it's something that I I wish maybe we had even fo- my my parents are Caribbean, so mm-hmm. like my mom was a swimmer growing up, and that's why she really wanted us to be swimmers. My dad didn't live; he lived in the middle of Jamaica, so he he wasn't near the ocean. Um, but he so he doesn't know how to swim, but it's not that he's scared. So it's it's definitely like I could imagine if you're living in a a household where that trauma of being of water, right? Where water becomes the enemy, right? Because before when I guess our ancestors were living in near the water, it wasn't their enemy. They were building boats, they were fishing and all this stuff, but then be, then being never seeing land and you're surrounded by water, right? Yeah. Being and, forcibly taken from your home and either threatened to live or go overboard, right? That's Yeah. People don't think about that or talk about that. And it's it's deep. It's deep. Like, you know, you don't want to drown. That's the thing. Like, nobody wants to drown. Right. And when you have no control over it, where you feel like, you know, the, the equipment could fail you, the equipment could turn against you, and what will you do? You'll drown and you'll never come back up. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. deep. Yeah, it, it is. It is. And a lot of it has to do with being able to surrender. You know what I mean? So for me, I I learn my gear as 
best as I could. I became uh, a technician so that I could learn even more so I can explain to people the ins and outs a lot easier so that I can create ease of mind or peace of mind for people Mm -hmm. with with that particular concern Um, because that does come up in conversation sometimes. When you get into a sport like this, there's a level of surrender that you have to just accept that if it's your time, it's, you know, it's your time, whether you're, whether you're actually driving, right. Mm -hmm. Or you're out in the ocean, whatever the case may be, because it's just part of being part of the, the magnificence that is the power of the ocean. So you have to decide what is the most important thing about you being there in that space. Is it that you're going to see the most amazing thing of your life? Is it that you're going to be humbled by an experience? Or is it that you're going to be too scared to even know? What challenges are you facing, though, right now with building the Dive Muse brand or even just in, like, next steps within the diving industry? I think it would have to be getting people committed. Diving takes a a monetary, emotional, physical investment. It's an adventure. You're doing one of the most extreme sports in the world. Granted, even though it's one of the most extreme sports, it is one of the safest extreme sports. Are you sure? Yes. So the reason why I say that is because there are, are not very many extreme sports that require the amount of training that diving requires. We're a self-regulated industry. And an open water scuba, scuba course it alone is about 32 hours, 32 or 34 hours uh, of training, right? So that's almost, that's almost a full work week right there. <laughs> There's a, a large component of uh, knowledge development and just, you know, studying book work, there's quizzes and exams, then there's practical uh, work. So actually trying on the equipment for the first time and using it and getting used to using it and knowing how to use it in various situations, of course, in, in a confined water or pool area. And then there's the practical assessment, which actually is the smallest portion of the course. Um, and that's actually getting into the the ocean. So you do so much leading up to like to pre- in preparation to the finale, you know, getting actually getting in the ocean. Um, so that's why scuba is one of the safest the safest sports. Once you get into diving, it's a lifestyle. So getting people committed to actually going through it all the way has been a challenge for you. Yes. Um, usually what I run into with, with, I'll say my target market is the, the, the most common objection is <clears throat> that, that I, I can't swim. That's the, the most common, um, objection. I can't swim, let alone dive, you know, but that takes me back to, we all have to start somewhere. You know, if you're passionate enough to want to explore the ocean, or any aquatic environment, then you, you know, you do the work, you get in the water, you practice and you just start and you keep going and you keep going until you get to a level of comfort where you can move on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Is your niche people of color? Yeah. Okay. People that look like me, people that look like me for sure. I'm always sharing with everyone that I meet that I'm a diver. Like most of the people that know me Whatever the situation is, somehow the conversation always leads back to me diving. Like, I could be in the grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> I could be literally doing anything. Like, I just the other day, <laughs> I was at a restaurant and I gave the cashier one of my cards. And they were like, that was kind of left field. You were just buying food for me. <laughs> <laughs> the conversation, like, I always bring the conversation to diving because I just, I love it so much. And I want to share it with the world. And I think that... Um, a lot of the, the environmental problems that are going on with the ocean just has to do with us being disconnected. It's out of sight, out of mind. So there's, you know, no viable connection to the ocean. So people just, you know, ignore it and they don't care where their trash goes and things like that. So I'm always sharing. I'm always like, 
whatever the conversation is, bringing it back to diving. You know, I think one of the things a lot of people get scared about when they pursue their passions that may, you know, may not always be understood by other people or it's not something that a lot of people know about is this idea of how to sustain your life. So, like, how are you able to sustain? Like, I know you talked about how you are in, like, an aquatic in- entertainer. You are you also, like, service equipment for different brands. Like, what are some of the different revenue streams that you've been able to build so that you can continue to, like, b- to dream drive and 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 pursue your passion? So the hustle is real. <laughs> right? Like I would imagine it has to be. <laughs> All day, every day. I've worked with dive centers. So I teach scuba. I teach skin diving, or I like to call it basic water skills for people who want to build their confidence uh, in water, especially with being down in Florida and and in recent and, and recently the local community here in, in Southeast Florida having more awareness about water safety Mm -hmm. because there were a a couple of related to like young drownings. So right now in in this community, a lot of people are like, we want, they're seeking guidance in in terms of getting their children um, prepared to, to be in the water. I do service equipment uh, for several brands. I also, I also am a mermaid. So I, I am a performer, so I do underwater performances um, with the Medusa Marina Aquatic Hats in Fort Lauderdale. That's so dope. Like, I don't know. I'm like, this is just so dope. Like, I, I, it's, I think it's really inspiring to see that you can make a life out of your interest if that makes sense you know what i mean i think there's a lot of us listening in who are like let's say there's somebody who's interested in like this is real this is real left field like you know bugs that live in the desert right but you're so scared to get started and you're so scared to pursue it because you feel like you can't make your life around it but ryan is making a life around being a dive professional right like what advice would you give to somebody who's just scared to to really dig deep and to figure out where that digging deep can take them. Learn everything you can about your passion and ask your the youngest members in your families what <laughs> if they would like to, you know, try and have a conversation with the youngest members in your family. So some of my best inspirations have been from my nephews and my niece and taking them um, and talking with them about what I do. Because they ask the craziest questions. I got into doing eco tours because um, my nephew asked me about the different fish. He was like, what are the different fish, yo? (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) How can can you tell the difference? I couldn't really answer him. Um, But then I was just like, well, how could I tell the difference? I got into eco tours. So just find out everything you can about, about, about what you're interested in and... And bring that to to the children in your family or children uh, that you might be able to speak with um, because they're the most creative. They, they are the future. <laughs> I think that's really important. And I feel like they're just so inquisitive that they'll tell you the truth, right? Like they'll, you'll get this honesty and this, this innocence that can really serve as inspiration. Remember to stay connected to your breath. I, I do a lot of yoga and... One of the things that helps with everything is taking a moment to go within and to just remind yourself of who you are through through the breath, through breathing, mm-hmm. and just being being present with that because that is the one thing I think everyone on this planet takes for granted, the ability to take a breath. And to be able to do that underwater for me is just amazing. It's like magic. <laughs> but I just like I feel like that must be an amazing feeling to be able to like open your eyes and to breathe underwater, especially because they say, you know, the only time we're able to breathe in water is in our mother's wombs. Right. Mm-hmm. To have that like out of body experience or inner body experience, I should say. Yeah. We were just talking about this on the boat the other day, how being in the ocean is like being in the womb of the earth. And one of the things that. I work, I do with people is I I, I work with people to help build their confidence, um, which is why I 
decided to create the retreats to create a, an ocean healing space for people to reconnect with their ocean spirits and rekindle that, that deeper connection to our planet. So when you say like you're, you're, you might be too scared. I work with people who are too scared at different levels. So when you come to a retreat, you don't have to necessarily be a diver. You can be a beachcomber. You can be a snorkeler. You can do the full immersion and be a diver. I work with you at all of those levels because I think what's the most important is reconnecting to, to our home on a deeper level so that we can then be more responsible because we're if we're in it, we we wouldn't want to hurt it. You know what I mean? I feel like sometimes yeah. when you're out of sight, out of mind, like what you were saying before, like if you never exactly. experience the water, you don't ever think about the water. You never see the consequences of hurting, hurting it or the ecosystem. Absolutely. When I became a, a scuba instructor through Patty, which is the professional association of diving instructors, um, and also the the organization that I certify people through, we were, we, we have a a creed that we go by. And, uh, if you don't mind, I, I can read it. Definitely. I really love this because as a dive professional, it's, it, it just, it keeps me focused and it's in alignment with what I do, uh, with my retreats and everything as a patty professional, I have the opportunity to see Fear changed to courage. Faint-heartedness converted into accomplishment. Timidity transformed into confidence. Anticipation turned into passion. As a patty professional, I can open hearts and minds to the hidden beauty of nature's creation and our obligation to protect it. Foster self-esteem in another person. Teach the value of character and integrity. And transform another human being and change a life for the better and forever. I love that. You have such a nice voice. <laughs> you have a really no, I feel like you. you have a really nice voice. Um <laughs> Thank you. Oh, uh, another revenue st- stream. I'm getting into guided meditation. <laughs> listen, that but I knew something. I'm like, girl, you got a good voice. You got to use that. <laughs> I could definitely see that. <laughs> are you able to listen to this is really offbeat. Are you able to listen to um like I guess your scuba helmets? Do you can you like play music in it? <laughs> okay, so with so no, maybe there. So there's a, what's called a full face mask where you can have a comms or communication system with another diver. Okay. Um, and for commercial diving there, are, I, I believe I'll have to double check on this, but I believe there's, um, a, a way to play music but that's like for commercial diving that's not something and i was just gonna say because you could do like guided meditation while you're diving i don't know you could upsell your packages um yeah that's a great idea that's <laughs> actually a fantastic idea i'll have to write that down so what's next like what's on the horizon for ryan for dive muse Okay, so um, I'm glad you asked that. I actually uh, have been working on my website, which if anybody wants to do that for me, (laughs) (laughs) I just have a lot of plans for 2020. Um, I'm going to be hosting several retreats in Key Largo, Rotan, Honduras, uh, in the Bahamas, and in Ocho Rios, Jamaica. So there are going to be uh, retreats in 2020. Yeah, I'm just rolling out the new ocean healing workshops and retreats uh, and really focusing on that direction. Also, uh, with being based in Florida, I'll be getting started with um, the National Association of Black Scuba Divers for a Southeast Florida chapter. Um, So building that community here 
um, in Southeast Florida, because believe it or not, there isn't a chapter here. We have, there's a chapter in Orlando, but not in Southeast Florida. So um, we're undertaking that and um, just being more, just continuing to be more involved with uh, the nonprofit organization Diving with a Purpose and uh, conservation efforts. And of course, sharing all of that with the children, because without the children, we have no future, right? Right. So where can our listeners um, get in contact with you if they want to, you know, talk with you after this or learn more about what you're doing? If you want to get in contact with me, go ahead and find me on my website, divemuse.com, D-I-V-E-M-U-S-E.com, or on Instagram at Dive Muse, Facebook at Dive Muse, YouTube at Dive Muse, Twitter at Dive Muse. You can contact me on all the things, even Pinterest. <laughs> Um, my email is wave, as in waving hello, wave at divemuse.com. So let's get into our lightning round, Ryan. Um, you know, I love to give our our guests a prompt. And then I want you to just tell me the first thing that comes to mind. And remember, we're sticking with our dreams and drive metaphor. Okay? Okay. So the first word is park. Stop. Reverse. Breathe. Neutral. Think. Drive. Act. Mm, I like that. Um, and if you want to be a dream driver, you have to have your keys to success. So, Ryan, what do you think are three things that all dream drivers need in their toolkit? Um, and I guess for the for the essence of this show, I'll say before they hit the water instead of before they hit the road. <laughs> nice. You need a reference library. Know your resources. Know your resources. If you don't know, find out and know where you can find out. And that's that's pretty much it. That like covers everything for me. <laughs> <laughs> that that really, you know, a, a good reference library um, or just a, a, a solid a solid resources library, whether it be people, books, um, websites, or whatever. Know your resources because you can do anything with that. Yep. Well, thank you so much, Ryan. This has been such a pleasure. And I really hope that our listeners today just are inspired to pursue that passion within themselves because they never know how it can blossom, right? Yeah, definitely. And I cannot wait to meet you and get in the water with you. So let's do it. Let's figure Girl, it you out. You should see my face right now. Like, uh... Those y, well, those YMCA swim classes that my mom used to uh, force me to go to, that, that was a long time ago. You know, I'm not scared of the water. It's just, I just don't, I just don't like swimming. I like splashing around. I like being in it. But, uh, yeah. Then you'd be a perfect diver because if you were to swim to dive, you would go way too fast and you wouldn't see anything. Really, with diving, you're just, you're sinking and you're kind of like, you know, floating around <laughs> you're taking it easy so swimming hard is not not something that you typically do as a diver i have asthma uh, <laughs> I, I go to the doctor and get cleared it's okay i have i have solutions i have solutions no no <laughs> look i mean like though i'm being i am not being a dream driver right now you know what you never know you never know you never know you know what it's it's totally all right. You do what you do what is within your comfort. Maybe snorkeling first. I couldn't like you could help me get over that that uh, anxiety that got, came over me in Mexico because that was not nice. Like I legit felt like I was gonna cry. Like it was just horrible. Like it, I would it, I would love to help you. And next time, definitely cry. But after I show you how to clear your mask, so you can keep going. All right, I'll hold all you right. to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so that's a wrap for episode 217 with Ryan Tyler. I hope you enjoyed hearing her dream driving journey as well as her keys to success. If you love this episode, please, 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 please share it with a friend. Screenshot it. Tag us on your Instagram stories. I think this is a very unique dream driving journey, and I want as many people as possible to hear Ryan tell her truth. Make sure you're using the hashtag Dreams and Drive when sharing, and you can find us on all the platforms, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Dreams and Drive. 
If you want to be part of our Dreams and Drive newsletter, The Keys, which goes out weekly, you can sign up by going to www.dreamsanddrive.com slash join, dreamsanddrive.com slash join. And remember, if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, please leave us a rating and review. I don't have any new reviews to read this week, but I want to read yours or next week's episode. So if you want to hear your review, your comment, your feedback live on the show, you got to leave one. Um, I'm still kind of impressed by last week's review that I read where we had a listener who binge listened to all the shows in two weeks. Now, that's dope. That's impressive. Um, I'm really every week so surprised and also so humbled by all the feedback and all the value that you guys are getting. As always, keep dreaming, keep driving, and we will chat again in episode 218. Bye, guys.